You know, after more than 30 years of caring for people with high blood pressure, I've come to realize something most folks never think about. We spend our whole lives worrying about the top number, that big bold one on the blood pressure chart. Keep it low, they say. Lower is better. But what if I told you that sometimes lower can actually be too low? I still remember one of my patients, Mrs. Harper, 71 years old, a retired teacher with a warm laugh. She came to me saying, Doctor, my pressure's perfect. It's only 95 over 58. But then she added, though lately I get dizzy just from standing up. Her story isn't rare. In fact, it's more common than you might think. You see, the bottom number, the diastolic, is when your heart finally gets to rest, and it's also when your heart itself receives blood. When that number drops too low, the heart doesn't get the oxygen it needs. And that's when fatigue, confusion, and even heart failure can quietly begin to creep in. So today, I want to take you on a different kind of journey, not one about fear, but about understanding. Let's talk about what too low really means and how to protect the quiet rhythm that keeps you alive. When I first started practicing medicine more than three decades ago, I thought blood pressure was a simple thing. One number up, one number down. Keep them both in the safe zone and you're fine. But the older I got, the more patients I saw, the more I realized the human body doesn't follow neat little rules especially when it comes to that bottom number, the diastolic pressure. Have you ever stood up too fast and suddenly felt the world tilt for a moment, that brief wave of dizziness, that lightheaded feeling, as if your body forgot what gravity means? That, my friend, might be your heart whispering that your pressure has dipped too low. I remember another patient, Mr. Thompson, a retired firefighter in his late 60s. He was proud of how healthy he was, walked three miles a day, watched his diet, never smoked. But one afternoon he fainted while gardening. His wife rushed him in, worried sick. When we checked, his diastolic pressure was just 54. His top number, the systolic, was fine, around 115. Now, here's the surprising part, on paper, that looks good. Many people would even call it ideal. But what's happening inside the body tells a different story. Your heart only gets its own blood supply when it relaxes, not when it beats. It's during that resting phase that the coronary arteries fill with oxygen-rich blood. So when the diastolic number falls too low, the heart is essentially running on empty. It's like trying to drive uphill with the gas tank half full. You might make it for a while, but eventually, the engine sputters. Low diastolic pressure, especially below 60, can leave you feeling weak, tired, or foggy. You may notice your memory slipping, or you feel drained after just a short walk. Some people start to avoid activities they used to love, gardening, golf, or playing with grandkids, not because they're lazy, but because their body simply can't keep up with the oxygen demand. And here's what's tricky. Many older adults are told to keep pushing those numbers down. Doctors, and I include myself here, used to be so focused on preventing strokes that we sometimes forgot the other side of the equation. Lowering blood pressure too much, especially the diastolic, can reduce blood flow to the brain and heart, increasing the risk of fainting, confusion, even dangerous falls. As we age, our blood vessels naturally stiffen. Imagine a garden hose left out in the sun for years. It doesn't flex the way it used to. That stiffness pushes the top number higher while the bottom number slides lower. So, an older person might have readings like 140 over 60 which isn't always bad, but if that bottom number keeps slipping down, it can start to spell trouble. Medications are often the biggest culprit. Some blood pressure pills, like alpha blockers or certain central acting drugs, lower the bottom number more than the top. Add in diuretics, antidepressants, or even medications for erectile dysfunction, and your pressure might dip lower than your body can handle. Other times, the cause is dehydration. Many older adults don't drink enough water because they don't feel thirsty. But by the time you feel thirst, your body is already short on fluids and your blood volume has already dropped. There are also conditions like diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and chronic infections that interfere with the body's ability to regulate pressure. And of course, emotional stress plays its part too. 
When you're constantly anxious or lonely, your nervous system stays out of balance. Over time, that can make your pressure swing up and down like a seesaw. I once treated a retired nurse named Helen. She'd lost her husband a year earlier, and since then, her blood pressure had been unpredictable. Some mornings it was high, other days, she felt faint just getting out of bed. She wasn't drinking much water, skipped meals, and hardly left the house. When we ran her tests, her diastolic was just 58. I told her gently, Helen, your heart's doing its best, but it's asking for help. We made small changes, more fluids, light morning walks, and a simple medication adjustment. Within weeks, her energy came back. She started painting again. Sometimes, healing isn't about new pills, it's about listening to what your body's been quietly trying to say. Your circulatory system is like a network of rivers. Your heart is the main pump, your vessels are the channels that carry life to every corner. When the river runs too fast, it erodes the banks, that's high blood pressure. But when the river trickles too slow, the water can't reach the roots, that's low blood pressure. Balance, that's the secret. So how do we find that balance again? Start simple. Hydration. Even mild dehydration can lower your pressure. A glass of water in the morning and another before each meal can make a world of difference. If you feel dizzy when you stand, move slowly. Don't rush out of bed, sit up, breathe, let your body adjust. If your legs feel heavy, compression stockings can help push blood back toward your heart. Diet matters too. For some people, a little extra salt, if approved by your doctor, can help. If you're low in vitamin B12 or folate, you might be developing anemia, which reduces the blood's ability to carry oxygen. A simple blood test can reveal this, and proper supplementation can turn things around. Then there's movement, gentle, regular movement. You don't have to run marathons, you just need to move your body enough to keep your vessels flexible. A 20-minute walk. Some slow stretching. Maybe yoga with your spouse. These aren't just exercises, they're messages to your heart that you're still alive, still participating in the rhythm of life. And please, limit alcohol. A glass of wine with dinner is fine, but too much can dehydrate you, dilate your vessels, and drop your pressure even more. Finally, pay attention to how you feel. Numbers are useful, but they don't tell the whole story. If you feel faint, unusually tired, or less sharp, that could be your body's early warning system. Your blood pressure monitor can't measure intuition, but your body can. Every week, I meet people chasing perfect numbers without realizing there's no such thing. What's perfect for one person could be dangerous for another. The goal isn't to reach 120 to 80, it's to feel steady, strong, and clear. When I talk to my patients about blood pressure now, I always tell them this. Don't just aim for low, aim for right. Because a healthy life isn't built on numbers. It's built on awareness, balance, and compassion for the vessel that carries you through it all, your heart. So, if you've been feeling dizzy lately, or if your diastolic number dips below 60 more often than not, don't ignore it. Talk to your doctor. Bring your questions. Your heart deserves that attention. You know, sometimes, I think the heart is the most honest storyteller we have. It doesn't lie. It doesn't pretend. It simply beats, telling us, in its quiet language, whether we're living in balance or pushing too hard. I've met so many good people who thought getting older meant accepting weakness, dizziness, fatigue, forgetfulness, as just part of life. But it isn't. Those are signals. Gentle taps on the shoulder from your own body saying, Hey, I need you to slow down, listen, and care for me the way I've cared for you. Your diastolic number may not make headlines, but it holds the quiet truth about your heart's well-being. When it drops too low, your heart is whispering for help. And if we listen, truly listen, we can often prevent tomorrow's pain with today's awareness. So tonight, when you sit down and check your pressure, don't just read the numbers. Pause. Feel your pulse. Feel that rhythm keeping you alive. That's you, still here, still capable of change, still worthy of care. And if this message spoke to you, 
If it reminded you of someone you love, share it. Let's help each other stay informed, stay strong, and most importantly, stay kind to our own hearts. Because life after 60 isn't about slowing down. It's about living smarter, gentler, and with more gratitude for the body that's carried us this far. Stay healthy, my friends, and remember, your best years aren't behind you. They're still beating, right here, inside your chest. <laughs>